Hello everyone and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 10. It's another pre-recorded episode coming at you from some time in the past before I go over to South Africa to chill with my family. Yesterday I recorded The Path, which is this glorious bit of work that we did over the course of uh, 40 minutes yesterday. We tried to do the episode in one take. We got interrupted by the amazing Azuma Void, which threw us off our stride. Let's see if we can do a one take this time around. By the way, you might have noticed uh, some uh, enhancements to the path that we worked on together yesterday. I got a bit carried away after the recording. I was very inspired. I thought what we created here was really cool. And I wanted to add a few more awesome features into it. Starting with these light posts, which are, you know, sci-fi inspired. They remind me a little bit of The Mandalorian, a bit of Star Wars, that sort of thing. And now that we've got the end rod shop over there in the shopping district, I was able to make these quite easily. Looking pretty fancy. I also added in a little sulfur pool over here. Of course, the sulfur is the squirting juices of the squirter pod uh, pooling over here and creating a nice little feature, which I think looks great. And I'm not sure if I added more stuff that you guys haven't seen uh, since the last time I decreased the number of squirter pods about the place. I think I messed a little bit with the foliage and whatnot. But I'm very happy with how this path has turned out. And, uh, you know, my goal was to try and make it look kind of alien-like. And even though we are we are using, like, flowers, cherry blossoms and stuff, I think, like, in the right frame of imagination mind, one can assume these look kind of alien. You know, they, they, they're kind of weird-looking things. The, the only thing that doesn't look that alien to me is the grass. But maybe we can figure out a solution for that when I get back from South Africa. Um, but yes, the place is looking absolutely jazzy. Let's take a look at this path all the way from up here. And I do enjoy the fact that this path has a lovely little bend in it. Uh, I think that was a nice little touch, not just making the path super straight. Oh, and also, on that note, I did update the map because I love seeing new stuff appearing on maps. And there we go. The uh, Gigacorp alien landscape starting to come together quite nicely. And I think the path turned out looking real decent over there at uh, the Terra Dash M1. Very nice. So what are we doing today? Well, you might have noticed something new has also popped up since we were last hanging out out here yesterday. It's a wall. Yes, it is time to, I suppose, enclose our biome within a wall to basically lay the boundaries of our base for the season. And while I'm away in South Africa, I just wanted to make sure that I, you know, let all the hermits know exactly where my plans are uh, for the season and so we wouldn't have any building conflicts or something like this. So what I did uh, last night, I think, I don't even remember now. I'm I'm so, I'm in such a whirlpool of packing, pre-recording, editing, scheduling. I don't even know what time of day it is right now, friends. But you might have noticed that, uh, yes, there is now a boundary to the base, which extends a little bit beyond the mission uh, thing over here and goes almost, I sort of, it leaves a sort of bit of no man's land between Impulse's Cyber City and our uh, alien landscape over here. And uh, well, the plan is to build this sort of wall all the way around the boundaries of the thing. And today we shall plug away at finishing off this segment over here of the wall. I'm hoping we can finish all of this bit here and maybe even turn the corner. Uh, if we if we get lucky and we work pretty hard. But yeah, looking pretty sweet. I really love it. And this is going to give us more than enough space, I think, to achieve all of the ambitions that I have uh, for our Giga uh, base, Giga base, our Giga Corp base, to bring it to life over the course of the, the next few months or so and uh, really make this thing feel like it is alien, right? I think creating a boundary like this is super important for a base like this, especially if you're trying to make something that is otherworldly you need to somehow make a boundary, whether that's with trees or mountains or just a good old-fashioned wall, which is uh, what we're working on. And uh, just to show you the design, pretty simple. We're just using the Gigacorp color palette here, the white, the orange, the brown, the blue. Uh, and uh, we're using the end rods, of course, for some lighting all the way around too. So nice and easy, nice and symmetrical also. Uh, so hopefully I can remember the pattern, but it's pretty straightforward. And I've got all the blocks in the inventory over here that we're going to need. 
uh, to get going on this thing. I might need to check in every now and then to remember the design. But um, yes, welcome everybody to uh, a pre-recording episode two. And I really do hope you enjoyed the previous one. I was editing it yesterday and uh, listening back to the story that I told you was quite, kind of inspiring. And I really did enjoy putting that episode together uh, because... I don't know, it was just cool to just talk for a bit and not worry too much about video production and stuff, you know, just to have a chat with you guys and connect on a more human level. I thought that was really cool. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please do let me know in the comments. And also, if you have any stories from your own childhood that is inspired by the stories that I'm going to be telling you over the next couple of weeks, please don't be shy. Share them with us in the comments. One of my favorite things about my older vanilla Let's Play series was that you guys used to share your, your stories with, with me and the audience also. And that was, uh, that was super cool. So please don't be shy. Let, let us know if you've got any interesting stories out there. Speaking of stories, what we're talking about today. Well, we're building a wall. We're making a wall. And I've got a very interesting story to tell about a wall not necessarily about uh, the wall itself, but more about what came of a wall that I once found myself standing on. Pretty much like this. Last night while I was having a shower, I was trying to think about what to talk about in today's episode. And I asked myself the question, what is your origin story, Randog? How have you landed up being a YouTuber making Minecraft videos for the last 10 years. Can you guys believe I've been doing this for uh, for 10 years? That's pretty insane, right? Absolutely insane. I think, In fact, I think it's more than 10 years. I have never done anything for more than 10 years in my entire life, mostly because I have a very curious personality and I get bored of stuff quite easily. And uh, when it comes to jobs and careers and things like this, I usually find myself moving on after a couple of years uh, always in pursuit of something more interesting, I suppose. I, I guess I'm never satisfied, which is maybe not a good thing. <laughs> but it's certainly um, one of the strong uh, character traits that I share. But this particular job I have been doing, well, for a very, very long time indeed. In fact, I've probably been doing this job for as long as some of you guys have been alive. Isn't that insane to think about? My goodness. So I was asking myself, what is the origin story of all of this? Why and how? Have I ended up doing this? And why do I love doing this so much? And it all comes back to a story uh, I have figured out that involves a wall. And uh, we're going to have to go way back for this one, friends. We're going all the way back to, uh, I would say, 10-year-old Rendog. Something like this. Just before I went to high school, uh, which was when I was 12 or 13. So yeah, this would have been about uh, a 10-year-old Rendog. Uh, this is a, a story from the 10-year-old Rendog's perspective. And, um, well, I guess I need to give you a little bit of pretext as to how I found myself sitting on top of a wall and, uh, I guess, finding my purpose in life in this very weird way. Uh, so I went to a, a school in the city of Johannesburg in South Africa, and it was just a normal school, but it was an all-boys school. And um, the only way that we used to sort of interact with girls was on the weekends where our parents would organize what we used to call socials. And a social was basically just a gathering of kids from the boys' school and the girls' school um, at somebody's house. And it was basically like a, like a house party, right, for, 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 for preteens. We would just go over to whoever's house party it was, hang out, uh, you know, have music outside, drink soda, hang out in the garden, swim, chat. You know, usually the entire party was uh, the boys on one side of the house and the girls on the other side of the house. And then only the super brave ones um, making the effort to actually communicate with one another. You, you know how it goes. I'm sure some of you guys have, have either recently been to a party like this or can remember these sort of parties when you yourselves were, were very young. And um, the frequency of these parties was pretty regular. We used to have these kind of parties, I don't know, maybe once every second weekend or something. And uh, it, it really depended on which parents were willing to host, you know, 20 or 30 kids over at their house. But these socials are always a, a really fun time and a really great way for us to, I guess, learn how to socialize with other human beings um, as young kids. And, uh, and to also, I, I don't know, sort of uh, start to grow up a little bit, I suppose, right? 
So a big thanks to all of the parents that facilitated these house parties because they certainly were some of my funnest uh, times as um, a very, very young kid. Now, it was at one of these particular house parties that I met a wall. And this wall and I became exceptionally good friends because the more that I thought about my origin story of being a Minecraft, the more that I realized that perhaps it was rooted in this particular moment where a wall and I became very well acquainted, so to speak. Now, th this wall that I'm talking about existed at my best friend's house. Now, my best friend was a very wealthy, or was from a very wealthy family. His parents were, uh, I don't know, they were big in South African television or something. And they had like a really amazing house in Johannesburg. It was huge. It was a mansion. It was very impressive, you know, you know, 10 rooms and a massive swimming pool. And some of the things I remember about his house is that uh, the swimming pool was was painted black on the inside, which was really crazy and weird. Because when you jumped into the swimming pool, especially at night, once the sun had gone down, it sort of felt like you were jumping into some sort of a void, you know? <laughs> it was really weird. It was like jumping into a very deep, dark ocean or something. And... Uh, one of the reasons us kids love going to their house was because of the swimming pool. It was just super cool and uh, and super different. But they also had like a, a massive wall around their property. And it wasn't just high, it was also very thick. This wall was probably about uh, two foot thick, I suppose. Thick enough for, let's say, a 10-year-old to be able to walk on top of uh, safely without any anything bad happening. <laughs> and uh, I used to go and visit my best friend a lot because he had the coolest house ever. He, w he was also um, a bit of a geek, so he had all of the latest tech, all of the latest computers. In fact, I believe, and this is going to uh, date my age a little bit, I believe one of the very first computer games that I ever played was at his house because he had a computer before many of us had a computer. And um, I remember going over to his house one day and he introduced me to a game on his computer called Duke Nukem 3D, which is a ridiculously awesome game for those of you guys who can remember it. But at the time, of course, you know, we were playing Nintendo and stuff and playing, uh, um, you know, console games and not computer games. And the very first time I used a mouse and a keyboard to obliterate uh, giant angry pigs with machine guns... Uh, I was hooked. <laughs> and it was from this point, I think, that I became a gamer, actually. I, You know what? In fact, I blame my best friend and his house and his wall for many things, now that I think about it. Anyway, around his house was a massive, massive wall. And uh, when I used to go visit, we used to play uh, Duke Nukem a lot. And then his mum would chase us outside to go and play. Because well, they also had a really big garden. So uh, his mum didn't want us spending all day inside playing video games. So we would have to go outside. And of course, as naughty 10-year-olds, I was a pretty naughty 10-year-old, I'm happy to admit. Not naughty in a bad way, just a very curious and uh, carefree 10-year-old. Uh, the story that I told yesterday, you know, goes a long way to test testify toward that. My, my behavior was not always on the safe side of things. <laughs> but one of the things we used to love doing at his house when I used to go visit is climb up onto the roof of the house and walk along the walls around the house. He had one of those houses that had a very flat roof. In fact, it was completely flat. It was like a very modern house, you know, all modular and square. A little bit like a Minecraft house, right? I suppose I can try and draw this for you. So this was their house, right? It was something like, uh, I don't know, there's the main house. And then there was like a thing that went like this. This was the main courtyard. It was like a double story over here. Some sort of massive mansion like so. And uh, the wall went around the property like this. And we used to get up onto the wall by climbing up like a drain pipe or something on the side of the house and then hopping onto the wall. I, parents out there are just freaking out right now <laughs> thinking about how naughty children can be. Yes, we were quite naughty. But we'd get up onto this wall and we would just spend an hour or so playing on top of the roof, you know, exploring, looking around. And of course, um, climbing up onto the walls and walking around the perimeter of the of the uh, the walls around the property. And for this was for, for us, this was like a really fun game. And we used to do it all the time. And so um, came a moment in my life where all of that practice climbing up that wall maybe paid off, I suppose, in some sort of weird way. Uh, because, yes, it was at one of these social events that I was telling you about earlier that that wall definitely came into play um, 
in the most curious of ways. Although now that I see the hourglass in the background, guys, can we just take a quick break from the story to quickly check in on the beacon shop? I do believe that there have been a few more sales over the course of this week and I want to make sure that we are documenting um, all of the sales that I'm doing. I don't want to, you know, mess up the sale book. I think in, a, in an episode, uh, a few episodes ago, I've been trying to keep track of all the sales that I've been making so that I can get uh, trophies from Azuma. So let's have a look. There's another 18. And wow, there's a whole bunch of sales here, guys. This is most excellent. Any around the back? Let's have a look. Okay, no, that's it. I think that's it. Okay, nice. Not as many sales as the previous week, I think. Yeah, previous week was like two stacks and a half. Or maybe even more. I think it was three stacks and a half. This time around, we only got 108. Although the weekend isn't over yet. So I'll make sure to check in uh, again a little bit later tonight. But that's great. I, I want to put this in the book, though, also. We need, we need to document these things, my friends. This is very important. I don't know where the book is, though. It might be in here. Is this the sales book? Yes, this is the sales book. Okay, so uh, week of March the 25th is 108. Okay, uh, sales fluctuating on this graph, but it's totally fine. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> You'll love to see the sales coming through like this. It makes me so happy. Uh, okay, I'll see, I'll deal with this uh, off camera after the end of this episode. Oh, dang it, so close. That was almost a one take, but I lost my train of thought after going to check on our profits. Dang it, people. I tried so hard to make it a one take. Maybe the next one will be a one take, eh? <laughs> but... This one we're going to have a little cut in between, which is this one. I've gone and topped up my cup of tea in preparation for the rest of the story. It's a cup of rooibos tea from South Africa. Mm. And uh, I'm preparing myself to go home, right? Uh, Re-South Africanizing myself with South African treats. <laughs> but yes, uh, let's get back to the story. So, the wall at my best friend's house. And how does this coincide to what I have become in my life? Which I would describe if someone were, someone were to ask me, Raindog, what are you? What do you do? What is your profession? What is your profession, Raindog? I would say that my profession is an entertainer, um, an artist, and a video producer, I suppose. All wrapped up into one. But if I were to use one word to describe myself, I suppose it would be an entertainer. Because that's what I do for a living, right? I make videos, you guys watch it, you guys are entertained by the episodes, hopefully, and so thus, vis-a-vis, -vis, ergo, I can define myself as an entertainer. And I think that's where I do put myself. An, an artist entertainer. Yes, let's go with that. And funnily enough, it was an experience that involved this, well, not this wall, but involved the wall at my best friend's house and a social event at my best friend's house that I think somehow foreshadowed who... I have become today. And while I tell the story, I would love for you guys out there to think about your own lives right now. Where have you come to uh, right now? You know, what are you doing in your life? What is your profession? And do you have an origin story? Have you ever thought about it? How did you get to where you are today? And more importantly, how early on in your life do you think your current career or your current role in your life was defined? Because those are the questions that I ask myself in the shower. And I think... I have the answer uh, involving this war. Ah, yes, there we go again with another cut. Distracted myself with good memories, everybody. <laughs> I was just thinking back to what a great time I had at that party, and it completely threw me off my train of thought. Uh, so, yeah, second cut of the episode. You hate to see it, really. Uh, I'm supposed to be a professional entertaining artist, aren't I? What am I even doing over here? Anyway, this was going to be a really awesome party because uh, this was a party at my best friend's house. And as I was explaining, his house was so awesome with the black swimming pool. It was a house that everybody loved going to. Um, his parents always treated us to, you know, really spoiled us with food and music and games and all sorts of awesome stuff. And I just, I couldn't wait to go. In fact, the whole class couldn't wait to go. We were so excited about this one. And so uh, these events usually happen on the weekend, on a Saturday or a Sunday, or whatever. And they usually started at around five, I guess, um, you know, and sort of went on to about, I don't know, eight or nine in the evening. You know, maybe not even that late. I don't know. Uh, I cannot remember the times whatsoever. But I do remember that these parties used to go on into the nighttime uh, or at least into darkness. Because the event that I'm about to talk about happened 
pretty much in the nighttime, I guess, because that's how I remember it. I remember the lights of the house, the, the lights of the street, lamps around me, and so on. Uh, because on this particular night, I got up to some naughty shenanigans that I probably shouldn't have gotten up to. But naughty shenanigans that I think basically foreshadowed the man that I have become today. You see, the party was going really, really well. Everybody had arrived. It started very awkwardly, as always, where there was a bunch of, uh, you know, sweets and chips and pop and stuff in one of the rooms, maybe in the, the, the TV room or the living room with some music playing in there, but a Hanson, uh, you know, playing Mbop, <laughs> you know, but a Nirvana playing, you know, bit of Guns N' Roses and whatnot. All of those sweet, sweet bands from that era. And, uh, you know, all the kids would end up in the in the living room, all the guys on one side, all the girls on the other side. Nobody talking to anybody, you know, feeling all very nervous. Maybe a couple of the more, um, you know, extroverted kids getting involved and telling jokes and running back and forth and teasing each other and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, the party started as these parties always did. A little bit awkward. <laughs> Everybody feeling a little bit strange. But as things progressed, because it was such a great setting, such a beautiful night, I remember it being such a perfect evening. The stars were in the sky. Uh, it was an absolutely perfect evening for such a social event. As things progressed, the party sort of moved on to the outside and we started swimming, or at least some people started swimming. I wasn't a big fan of the, the swimming business, mostly because I was a little bit bashful and uh, didn't want to, uh, you know, get into my costume in front of all the girls, you know. <laughs> I've always been this way, you know, I'm quite a, a private chap and um, certainly being, you know, e even even at the beach or something, I'm, I'm not, I don't like uh, sort of going swimming in the sea without my shirt on and stuff like that. You know, I'm just, I'm just bashful this way. So uh, I wasn't swimming, but a lot of the kids were. And, uh, you know, the pop was flowing. The good times were in a plenty. And we were all having as good a time as a bunch of 10, 11 year olds could ever have. It was in this moment in time that something inspired me. I'm not sure what. I think perhaps because I was not in the pool with everybody, I was feeling a little bit left out. And I perhaps wanted to get some attention on myself maybe. Uh, I mean, I think that's probably the right thing to do. I'm not ashamed to say that I enjoyed attention if I could get it um, every now and then, you know, even though um, I was a fairly introverted and am a fairly introverted person. I think I do need every now and then an extroverted, an extrovert injection um, in the form of entertaining people, I suppose, or or acting in front of a crowd or, or something like this. Hello! <laughs> we'll say hello to Eskal. I'm in the middle of a story and Eskal comes on. Guys, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. We're going to get interrupted in this episode once again. Yes, it's coming. I can feel it. Um, anyway, so yes, all the kids are in the pool. There's little rain dog chilling. There, there's the distraction. Who was that? That's either Ozuma or it's Eskal. That looks like it's Eskal. Yes, there he is. <laughs> I think maybe he uh, he figured it out that I'm busy doing a little something here and here uh, over here at the wall. We should probably just put a pause on the episode uh, for a second uh, in anticipation of the beautiful Swede coming over to say hello. And um, we'll have to politely mention that we're busy telling a story. Wh how has this happened two times in a row, everybody? Like, what's actually happening here? Why? <laughs> Why is this happening to me? <laughs> it's Sunday. You know, you would think that these hermits would be chilling. They'd be taking it easy today, maybe having some dinner with their family or something. But no, they got to get on the server and interrupt a rain dog story. Although I think Eskal knows. Uh, Eskal knows me very well, so he, he can probably see that I'm uh, I'm busy right now. So that's cool. So, um, okay, back to the story. So, kids of the swimming pool. Little rain dog feeling a little bit left out, a little bit bashful. Uh, twiddling his thumbs in the TV room with nobody to talk to. Feeling like, okay, maybe we need to do something about this. Uh, maybe we need to, um, I don't know, maybe climb up onto the wall and, you know, go somewhere that feels safe and familiar, I guess. But, uh, of course, I'd spend a lot of time on top of that wall with my best friend whenever I went to visit him. We used to go chill on the wall. So I, I headed over to the drain pipe, climbed up the side of the house, up onto the wall. It was pretty dark, I remember, and probably not the safest thing for Little Rain Dog to be doing at the time, but... Um, you know, I was quite familiar with the drain pipe. <laughs> so I felt quite safe uh, in, in my adventure up there. And, you know, I just sort of 
popped onto the roof and I remember looking down from the roof and seeing all the kids in the swimming pool having a really awesome time. And there was just such great vibes in the air, you know. There, there were a couple of boys and girls talking, which was, uh, you know, always exciting to see. And some kids were doing like cannonballs into the into the pool and, you know, <laughs> being all, being all kid-like and whatnot. And, uh, well, I, for some reason, decided that this would be a great opportunity to climb along the edge of the wall where the swimming pool was and, I suppose, make myself be known. Try and get everybody's attention, you know? And, I, I, you know what? I don't even know what I was doing. But as I, as I say, I think that this was a, perhaps a moment in my young life where my future career was in some way um, defined. Because if we call this the swimming pool... And yes, it was like an, one of those weirdly shaped swimming pools. You know, it wasn't like a, a square or a circle. It was like one of those modern style swimming pools. All the kids were down there and Raindog was up here on the wall like this. <laughs> and there I was staring down at everybody and um, I suppose removed from the party, but at the same time still a part of it. And now that we get to the crux of the story, I have had this weird internal epiphany that that's kind of how I've always been, right? I've, I've always been the guy on the wall and everybody's still down below. I'm still part of the party, but I'm, I'm up there. I'm just not down here with everybody else. And I've just blown my own mind because I've just realized something kind of um, deep about myself. Crazy. Anyway, I'm up on the wall. The kids are down there. And I'm trying to figure out a way to get their attention. Because, of course, that's the whole purpose of me being up here on the wall, I think. And so, for some reason, something comes to my mind to start doing impressions. <laughs> impressions of the teachers at school. Which, in retrospect, was probably not the wisest move to do. Especially considering there might have been a teacher at the party. Who knows, right? But there were a couple of teachers at my school that had very unique uh, characteristics and mannerisms and were relatively easy to uh, do impressions on. And I just started shouting at the top of my lungs as uh, pretending to be, I think it was a geography teacher um, <laughs> who had a very sort of nails, nasally voice like this. Hello, kids. We're going to be learning geography today. <laughs> a little something like that. And I started to, um, you know, to do an impression of the geography teacher. And a couple of the kids started to uh, look up and recognize what I was doing. And, you know, it could have gone two ways at this point. Little rain dog standing on top of a wall in front of an audience down below in the swimming pool. It could have gone one way where I am just the clown being an idiot. And, uh, you know, what am I doing up there, you fool? Could have gone that way quite easily if my impressions had not been as good as they were. But I will admit, I was pretty good at those impressions. But it went the other way instead. As one kid started watching and started laughing, so the other kids started watching and started laughing. And before I knew it, little rain dog standing on this wall, staring down at this pool, suddenly had a captivated audience down below. And I remember specifically the moment where I realized that every single kid down here was transfixed on me and what I was doing. And this is a feeling you can only describe if you enjoy theater and if you have been on a stage in front of a whole bunch of people. If you do a good job, there is a moment where you capture the audience, where their entire attention is on you, where they are thinking of nothing else other than what's coming out of your mouth or the actions that you are currently taking. And, you know, if I'm good at my job, I'm achieving that exact thing right now. Although some of you are probably have stopped listening quite a long time ago, but that's also okay. Because I'm certainly not the best there is at this sort of thing. <laughs> but it was in this moment that I realized that these kids were transfixed on me. And that somehow I had transformed from just being the kid on the wall outside of the party to being the party itself, <laughs> I suppose. For that very fleeting moment, I was everything there. And uh, I did a, a few more impressions. I think I did an impression of our Afrikaans teacher and an impression of our uh, English teacher. I don't know. I can't remember. But 
I remember, what I do remember is every single impression that I did was a smash hit. The kids were laughing like nobody's business, like uh, they were seeing some sort of a professional entertainer up on the stage. And, you know, I was very, very young at the time, but I do believe that that experience for my very young, tiny little brain perhaps felt so good that I have now spent the rest of my life trying to recapture that moment, to be back on top of that wall, to have that entire crowd in the palm of my hands, to no longer being the outsider, but being the side <laughs> of all sides in that very moment. And perhaps that is the reason that I have become a YouTuber and an entertainer. And though I am an extreme introvert. It is these moments right now where I'm on this wall performing for you all that some sort of itch is scratched within the depths of my soul. And um, it is why I love doing what I do so very much. So yes, the story of the wall is completed and I hope that I managed to entertain and get some sort of a message across. That message being don't be scared to look back and figure out how you have become who you are today. Because I think some of the confusion that we might have in our lives, especially when we're feeling a little bit lost, right? I've been there very many times before. Perhaps uh, today, you know, you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't know how I've ended up being who I am today. I'm not particularly happy with who I am today. Um, I don't know how this has happened. I don't know why. I don't know what I've done to get here, etc. Perhaps this is causing you anxiety or making you feel anxious. And I'll be honest with you, I've felt this way about YouTubing many times. I've often wondered to myself, is this the correct thing for me to do in my life? What happens when all of this comes, uh, comes to an end? I have no career prospects. I can't walk into a job and say, uh, hey, I've been doing YouTube for 14 years. Hire me, right? Being a YouTuber is extremely risky as a long-term career. And I've often thought to myself, is this the correct thing to do? And I've often wondered if I've made a terrible, terrible, terrible choice in my life to, to do all of this, just simply from an adult perspective, right? But then when you, you spend a little bit of time to ponder exactly how you've gotten to where you are, and perhaps you realize that way back at the very earliest formings of your personality and of your brain, what you do now was what you always were meant to do. That stress and that uh, those worries can be alleviated. And I think that that moment on that wall defined who I am today. And I am willing to face whatever consequences there might be ahead of me um, based on my choices to do what I do, to be an entertaining artist. If it all ends up in uh, going, you know, becoming very tough for me because of all of it, I'm willing to accept that because I can appreciate based on my earlier times as a kid on that wall that this is my calling and this is what makes my soul the happiest. And I hope that you out there can find a, a similar relief and a similar epiphany when you think about it um, a little bit harder. And uh, if you're willing to share your stories with us, please do let us know in the comments. What is the earliest memory that you can think of that helped define who you are today? I'm very much looking forward to reading all of your stories. So the wall is getting there. I mean, I wanted to do that section also, but I, wow, that time went so fast, by the way. Unbelievable. That just evaporated. We're about 40 minutes into the episode and uh, time to say goodbye. But yeah, looking pretty sweet, right? Let's get a nice bird's eye view of this uh, if we can. Let's go all the way up here and have a look. Yes, I love it. I love seeing the little details in the wall. I think these end rods have really tied the whole room together. You know, I think it's... A nice touch, especially at night when we'll see the sides of the wall illuminated by the end rods. I think that's going to look super, super cool. And, uh, you know, we're starting to define the boundaries of our base here, which is really, really cool. Uh, but anyway, guys, i got to go and edit this one and get working on the next one. I'm going to try to get two more out for you before I head off into South Africa, which is in a, a couple of days. So I need to really keep focused over the next couple of days and get the job done. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. That actually looks super cool from up here, right? And uh, looking forward to reading your stories in the chat. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.